Coming up in this video, three indoor cycling accessories from Jet Black that I've used this weekend to set up Llama Lab version 2, starting off with the remote-controlled fan, their trainer table, which tucks away just nicely for storage, and for those with very limited space, a problem solver, the trainer tray, which is quite a unique little product. I'll have a closer look at that and do some very interesting testing of its stability. Okay, starting off with the trainer table, because I can use that to store other things on as I build the rest. Now the trainer table comes in at 149 US or 199 Aussie dollars, has been seen a little lower on sale. Has multiple height adjustments, easy to store and tuck away, you'll see that in just a moment. Tablet, smartphone, device cutouts, non-slip surface. The surface itself on the top, 20 inches by 15, so around 51 centimeters by 38. Minimum height, 80 centimeters. Maximum height, 122 centimeters. So it does extend quite high. And maximum load weight of 10 kilos. All right, here I am putting the rest of the screws in. I think there's 12 screws all up. The Allen keys are provided. Everything goes into place. And I do reference the manual a few times. Has a stability foot there on the back, so it doesn't tip over. Again, looking at the manual. <laughs> Train to tray goes on. And a closer look at the table surface on top, non-slip section there in the center with two cutout sections and a handle there at the back. The non-slip is, as you'd expect, nice and grippy. And a closer look at those cutouts and the handle there on the back for up and down height. Sturdy enough for the laptop and you'll see the tuck away just here. So done, done, tucks away and done, done, pulls out. Easy as that, very, very cool. Okay, onto the trainer fan. And this comes in at 149 US, 199 Aussie dollars, and has been seen as low as 159 Aussie dollars. So definitely a budget option compared to the alternatives out there for indoor cycling specific fans. Has four speeds, an infrared remote control that is not coded. So if you have two of these, one remote control will do both or more. Directional airflow, and it does not have any smart control. So no heart rate, speed, or any other sensor control, which is one of the reasons why the price is kept down. The rear legs are removable and reversible for two different fan heights, or if they don't suit your needs, stay tuned for my creative solution for even more fan height. Okay, just demonstrating the different modes here. So turning it on remotely. One, two, three, four speeds, and back down, and off. To demonstrate how directional this fan is and how important positioning this fan correctly is, you're seeing here, as soon as I move off to the side, things really slow down. There's no airflow at all. And again, really drops off. Up high, not much. Down low, and that's where the flow is. So positioning of this is super important. On to some sound tests and speed tests. Now there are a lot of variables here, but I just wanted to know if we were in the ballpark of equivalent with the cheaper fans. So the kicker headwind there, noise about 47 decibels at low, bouncing around, yes, I should have charged this phone, bouncing around 55, 56 for the setting number two, setting number three, a little louder, 60 to 61, and all the air from the kicker headwind 62, 63 again. All right, switching the fan out, keeping everything else as equal as possible. Setting number one on the jet black fan, 58, 62, 63 for setting number two, setting number three, 64, 65, and setting number four, and 67. So a little bit louder on the jet black fan. When it comes to wind speed, let's have a look at that. Again, some very basic comparative testing here. 70 centimeters away. My little meter's bouncing around a little bit more than I'd like. However, let's see how we go. Setting number two, around 20 kilometers an hour, 21. Setting number three on the jet black fan, 23, 24 kilometers an hour. And setting number four, bouncing around 24, 25. Again, all very much dependent on the environment that it's in and the equipment used. But that gives us an indication of how much wind is being pushed through the fan. Okay, now on to the kicker headwind, starting off at the very, very low speed. Not much coming out there, 12 k's an hour, 13 k's an hour. Setting number two, up to around 19, 20 kilometers per hour. 
Setting number three. Things start moving around a little bit. 24, 25. So what we're seeing here is a little bit more air coming out of the kicker headwind at maximum speed. And it is a little less noisy. But look, I didn't expect miracles from a fan that is about probably two and a half times cheaper than the kicker headwind. But look, my tests here indicate that it's more than capable. And even more so when you apply my little hack to it before using it. Now, when it comes to positioning, here's my hack with this fan. For the room that I had and where I wanted to place the fan, mounting it upside down like that actually worked a lot better for me. I didn't want to have the fan too far away, so it allowed me to have the fan nice and close and get that full blast. Okay, with everything put together, it was into a testing session in the, well, the alternative Llama Lab, the Llama Garage, on a trainer which will not yet be named. And the airflow there on the fan, with it being placed upside down, the airflow comes in from the sides. So no problems at all with it uh, being upside down and getting that full blast across my body. Now, indoors, with cooling, it's not about having the fan directly in front of you. It's about having the fan across as much body surface as possible. And on an angle like that, pushing up at me, did a pretty good job. The table, just some commentary on that. No problems at all with it. Height was good where I had it set to. And I do trust its stability too. I would not be putting a MacBook Pro on something that I didn't trust. So I had no problems with that on there and typing. And when I was done, being able to fold the table away and push it up against the workbench was very, very convenient. I have a number of indoor trainer tables that I've been sent and a lot of them are quite bulky. So having one that is a bit of a space saver when you're finished is super handy. So speaking of being low on space, let's have a look at this trainer tray. Now I did this unboxing and review while I was riding to multitask. So here's the unit unboxed, 20 centimeters by 15 centimeters surface area. And it just simply locks in to your existing computer mount. So Garmin by default, which I've got a compatible Garmin mount there. And anything else you want to place on top? There's the Wahoo puck that it comes with. Phillips head screwdriver will switch that out. And I have the trainer fan remote right next to it. So you can see here how easy it is to take on and off as I'm still riding. And the two little screw holes at the top there allow you to put another computer mount on. So if you want to use this on your computer mount on the bike and also mount your computer, you can also do that. Now, if you're like me, the first question you have about this device is how stable is it really? Are things going to go flying off? So I had to come up with a way to demonstrate that. The best thing I could think of, which was in reach, was a knife. Why not try sprinting with a knife? on this tray to see how stable it was. So here we go. Okay, knife positioned there, only a few centimeters from my face. And can I hit a thousand watts with a knife on this tray? What's gonna happen? Come on, Llama. There we go, thousand watts. Knife is, it's jumping, it's nice and safe. Excellent, we live to see another day. <laughs> All right, that's the best I could come up with to show you the stability of the trainer tray. It passed the knife test. So there it is, the three indoor cycling accessories from Jet Black that, dare I say, offer pretty good value for money. The price tags on these aren't too bad at all. I think two of those products will remain in Llama Lab 2.0 out in the garage, that being the fan and the desk. The convenience of that desk folding away so easily cannot be beat. When it comes to purchasing these, typically I would say links in the video description below, but it's not the case for these. It's a bit of a mixed bag for availability worldwide and where to purchase these. Some of these accessories have been seen on the Zwift e-commerce website, although a lot of them are sold out, they are popular. Here in Australia, 99 bikes is your hot tip, but Google will get you there no matter where you are. Alrighty, with that, I'll leave it there for today. Thanks for watching this one. And it has been a breath of fresh air to present something that does offer what I would consider pretty good value for money. It's a rare thing these days in cycling.